Hello everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace dropping in on you. I'm about to jump out and run a quick errand. Thought it'd be a good time to check in with you guys and talk to you about something that I think is urgent and extremely important. It's probably not an exciting topic or anything like that, but it is something I think that we really need to give some attention to, and that's the thing that we are actually gonna have to grow up and mature in is the the need and desire to attack issues that aren't sensational, that aren't necessarily fun to talk about and exciting to talk about, but have great gravity and force in determining whether or not we're going to achieve some of these things that we desire. Uh, before I get started, I want to remind you we're still pushing on this fundraiser for Black Men Lead, the descript, uh, the information to support the work we're doing for young black boys and it's young, young adult males as well, all the way to age 30, this program services the needs and the demands and so much that's necessary. Uh, if you don't know about Black Man Lead, go to the Odyssey Project site and read up on the Black Man Lead and find out what we're doing with this program, but we definitely need your support. With that being said, let me move on. Um, after years of research, uh, about eight years ago, after having conducted years of research, I decided I wanted to sit down and take a panoramic approach to addressing issues within the black community. That included mass incarceration. That included serial force displacement, like gentrification, urban renewal, benign neglect, um, new forms of redlining. It uh, had a lot to do with the school to prison pipeline, miseducation of black youth, and so much more. But not to sit down and talk about the challenges as much as to create a blueprint of how we were to overcome it. This, this, this project became, became known as the Blueprint 1.0. The reason that I labeled it 1.0 because I was hoping that other minds, other great minds would join in and contribute and that we would eventually expand it, evolve it, and develop it. And during this process, I reached out to some great minds that I respected, one of which being uh, Dr. Claude Anderson. Uh, when I initially reached out, it was a partner of mine and myself, and we reached out, and the email was intercepted by Miss Joanne Anderson, who happens to be the wife of Dr. Anderson, and she sort of served as a filter initially, and so she also became a point of contact, in addition to Dr. Anderson, while developing this. Um, I wanted insight, and one of the things that impressed uh, Joanne Anderson, uh, and the reason she said she was intercepting it is because she said that Dr. Anderson was so passionate about what he did. If anybody got a hold to him, he was saying yes, and he was in his he had reached his 80s at the time, and this was a while ago. So Dr. Anderson is up there because I think he was 81 then, and so. Um, she said that he um, would say yes and that, you know, he wasn't as uh, healthy and as strong as he used to be. And she was kind of monitoring, you know, how many people were coming at him. And so I just said, well, look, can you just in his spare time have him have a look at this? And so they both looked at it and came back and said that they were impressed with the blueprint. The blueprint is also on the Odyssey Project uh, site uh, for those who want to check it out. And it is a comprehensive blueprint, and it's it's the outline of the totality of everything, but it gives you a comprehensive look at what is needed and necessary, right? And so one of the things that Joanne Anderson um, said that was, you know, um, important to me, she said that what I like about it is that you gave credit to uh, my husband for his contributions to your ideas uh, in the areas in which you feel he influenced you and you did that with every other person it wasn't 
as if you were sitting up and saying you just came up. You, you were basically saying you're stood on the shoulders of others and you've expanded the idea and thoughts and concepts and you have evolved them. And I appreciate that and thank you. And of course, you know, I you know, told her I appreciate it and she was welcome. But that was a, a matter of contention between myself and those two. And it was this, that Dr. Anderson had long, long before you got into the new millennium, Dr. Anderson, Anderson was saying that basically if we don't do something different, if we don't change what we're doing on an economic level, we are going to become economically irrelevant and locked into the bottom tier of the socioeconomic ladder by 2013. Uh, I disagreed with that, and I disagreed with it not so much on the principle of mathematics or any particular scale or system or experience. It was solely believing on, I don't believe anyone is ever locked anywhere. I don't believe you're ever trapped somewhere forever without a way out. I think that the longer you stay in something, the more difficult it is to get out of it, the more work it is. And if there's not a track record of taking action, you can't foresee how it's going to be done because there's no track record. And we don't, we don't have a track record but what I at the time uh, fought feverishly on and we we, we never came to a, uh, an agreement on was that I do believe that at that time that we had not reached uh, this point where we will be locked into the bottom tier of the socioeconomic ladder and ultimately become irrelevant uh, as a group of people here in the United States uh, now here we are in 2021 I still don't believe that we're locked in, but what I do believe is that we are reaching a point in which the probability of us ever breaking free and becoming what we're capable of being in this country is, the, the, the probability is uh, approaching uh, single digits in percentage uh, rates of possibility, uh, or even probable, and definitely not probability. And so why is that? It is because we don't take action. It is because we have become professional uh, finger pointers. We have become professional complainers, professional whiners. We have become experts and masters at regurgitating facts and statistics and, and notions and historical uh, realities that point to just how horrible life has been and still is for us in this, in this country. What we have not done with any great uh, specificity, any great uh, unity, any great consistency is take meaningful action to overcome it. We have become the perpetual victim. We know how to point fingers and say what everyone has done, but we have not made ourselves impervious to the schemes and machinations of a, of, of a nation who has proven itself to be hostile toward us. That's on us. We have not, with any true consistency, stood up and said, this is where it stops. Uh, there's an old African proverb that you have heard me quote multitudinous times, and it says that if there's no enemy on the inside, the enemy on the outside can do us no harm. Uh, that when you truly deal with what's going on on the inside, you start to behave differently. You start to move. As you learn, you start to take action that is in direct correlation with what you've learned. It's conducive to a better reality, a better outcome, what you're looking for. We don't do that consistently. We spend more time competing with one another. We spend more time uh, bowing our shoulders and sticking our chests out trying to show who's the most intelligent, who knows the most history, who is X, Y, Z. And the bottom line is our people are still suffering. Our people are still going through all kind of struggles and difficulties. Our people are still being marginalized. We're dealing with a situation now within an administration that promised our people the world. And now it is dumping on them with, 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 with no retribution, not even trying to hide it. And our people are scrambling 
and there's no unified movement because there's no unified agenda. Not that there aren't plans available, not that there aren't blueprints available, as I mentioned, but because we have not been successful in coming together as a unit and a collective to work on the things that we do agree we need. No, we are not a monolithical people in the grand scheme of things. Every one of us has different interests, but there are some common interests that none of us can escape. And those things we have to understand that as long as we don't have that type of collective mobility, the vast majority of us are not going to survive. Now, there are a bunch of us who are totally okay with that because they have learned how to navigate the system and manipulate the system and get uh, rewarded for it. And many times rewarded for misdirecting their own people, rewarded for uh, manipulating their own people, rewarded for uh, being buffers between the force of, of darkness and their own people. And so they're great with it, they're good with it, and I'm not talking with them. They don't belong to what I belong to. They don't stand for what I stand for. I'm talking about there are some people I understand there's work to be done. We may not all agree on how it needs to be done, but we understand there's work to be done. That has to be uh, an effective movement. We got, I mean, things as simple as we can't consistently move on sites and platforms that don't belong to us where we are literally making them millions of dollars for every dollar we can generate on our own on their platforms. We're enriching them at a greater rate than we're enriching ourselves. We're never going to gain ground that way. We're actually increasing the wealth gap. You have to understand this dynamic to understand that. And I had a discussion with one of my clients on uh, the, the importance of the need of having our own platforms so that we can generate uh, revenue that serves us on multiple levels. So we're talking again about vertical economics, something that Dr. Anderson talked about a great deal. You need to understand what vertical economics is and how that works and how we need to be on every level, level on every level of the vertical sphere, not just at the bottom entry level, because it's the higher levels of the vertical sphere that control uh, how effective those who are at the bottom level, say for instance, in retail. You, you can have a, a great idea, a great concept, hard work ethic on the retail level, but if you don't have vertical ownership and you only have ownership at the retail level, it's gonna be hard to win, why? Because the ownership at the other levels are gonna support interests that are diametrically opposed to yours. I'll give you a prime example. The beauty supply industry, a, a $15 billion a year industry uh, that is 96% funded by black dollars. So we're talking about $14.4 billion of the $15 billion industry is black dollars, yet we own a roughly around 3%. We have 3% ownership. You want to know why we have 3% ownership? We don't. We didn't practice vertical economics in it. We simply supported uh, entities that did not represent us at a level that allowed them to take a stranglehold on the vertical process. And what I mean by that is they don't simply own the stores, they own manufacturing, they control distribution. Well, when you own manufacturing and you control distribution, what do you control? You control the pricing. So what can you do now? You can provide favorable pricing for those people that you connect with and that you have a unified interest uh, with while providing unfavorable pricing for those who may be competition to those you're in cahoots with. So what, that, what does that mean? Black people trying to start beauty, bit, beauty supply businesses are gonna be priced out to where they can't compete with Asians, who, who are, they're the ones dominating the industry, with Asians who want retail businesses in, even in black communities. And until we figure out a way how to grab that. Let me tell you something, that's a real simple economic uh, principle. Uh, when it comes to race and, 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 and group economics. Any industry in which you dominate spending, you should also dominate ownership. Uh, unfortunately, that's been something that we have failed to grasp, we have failed to act on, and it has cost us dearly, and we've got to do something about it. So again, here we are, not taking action, here we are, sitting around and doing nothing but complaining, uh, diving. I mean, throw something sensational about something some uh, uh, rapper or star did or some uh, influencer did and 10,000 views in a matter of seconds. Start talking about growth. Black 
empowerment. You start talking about uh, holistically educating our youth and empowering them for the future. You start talking about uh, dealing with and offsetting gentrification in the black community. You start talking about upsetting the school to prison pipeline and disrupting mass incarceration. You start talking about those things and you get uh, no, no traction, you get no attention, you get no support and yet you expect to grow in this and you don't understand why you're being negatively impacted as an individual individual and why you're so frustrated as an individual because we're not acting in alignment with one another on a collective level which creates the power to support and underwrite your individual interests i could go on about that but we've got to do better i am so like I'm at this point where I go back to those conversations with Dr. Anderson and Dr. Jo uh, Joanne, and I start to think about, you know, the insistence upon, hey man, we're pretty much there. Ain't nothing we're gonna do about it at this point. To you know, me saying I, I don't believe that. I'm not accepting that. I'm going to consistently fight. I believe we still have a chance. To I'm here now and saying it's not that we can't do it. The question is, will we do it? That's the question. Bottom line, will we do it? And I don't have the answer to that because what I see right now is inactivity, uh, a lack of unity, a lack of support for the programs that are out there. Someone posted, I think, oh, matter of fact, it was uh, my man, uh, Dr. Michael Blanchard, who is my partner and co-host on The Teachers. Uh, he posted something that says, the people with the vision uh, have no funding, the people with the funding have no vision. That's where we're at right now. And you got we got to take action it's real simple if we don't take action uh we're gonna have a bunch of brilliant minds who have left a bunch of brilliant information and ideas that have done absolutely nothing um unfortunately on that note i'm getting ready to get out of here don't forget if you haven't supported what we're doing uh with the black man lead rite of passage initiative uh the information is in the description box go ahead and make it happen uh your support is appreciated and absolutely necessary on that note i'm out of here you guys have a great day